Hey everyone, I just really quickly wanted to answer some questions that some people had about my sleeping platform for my 2023 Forerunner. Uh, one question I had was from someone who was inquiring, was there anything that I found out I really need to change or do better? And there's actually one thing I should point out. In the previous video, I talked about the center leg, how it was sitting on top of the hump on the floorboard, and I didn't want to cut anymore because I was tired and lazy, so I moved the flange over to get it off that hump. Well, when I moved the flange over, I actually had to shift the whole platform over uh, almost two inches. And so things weren't, weren't really lining up very well, and I really wasn't happy with it. So when I was preparing to head out for a two-week trip to Utah, I realized that I actually needed to cut the center leg. So I brought it down like an inch and a half. So it sits on top of that hump in the middle of the floorboard. And since doing that, everything goes together much easier. It's all centered properly. I'm actually pretty happy with the layout. So if you've been following my schematics to a T, please make note of that because I have yet to update the schematics with that note. That's a fair question. Obviously I'm a big dude. There's not a lot of room here. How does a dude of my size get in and out of here every night? Well, I did that for two weeks straight on the road. And two of us did that. So I had my photography partner sleeping on this side and I slept on this side. So the first thing I tried was to go in head first like this, right? And I would get up kind of like this and then kind of turn around like this and bring my feet in. That kind of worked, but I'll show you what's actually worked really well and what I've been using ever since. What I found out was far more effective was to actually go in feet first. So I would hang on to the luggage rack up here, up top, just bring my feet in like this and just pull my body in. And then to get out, it's just the reverse. really that easy. Now, what was a little bit trickier was getting from the front seat to the back seat. When I had to do this was when it was either raining or we were stealth camping and I didn't want to be seen by anyone walking by climbing in and out of the back of my vehicle. It's a bit tricky. It had to be patient. I would take off the headrest just like that to give me some more room to work with. And then I could climb back head first and turn around. Uh, that, was, that was pretty tight. That was really tough. So what I was doing on a number of occasions was I would just get up like this. I know this is probably a really weird perspective of me right now. And swing my legs up through the center area right here. Then I could crawl in the back and just like that. So it is possible. Now, my partner is a 110 pound yogi. Uh, the first couple times she did this, she was complaining and I was like, I'm literally twice your size. And after that, she was like, all right, I'm done complaining. And she didn't complain the rest of the trip. She actually got pretty good at it. Yeah, she totally had her own way of doing it. You know, she crawled in head first but she was you know, half my size, so she could bend and twist and fold and end up in the right position. Definitely had an edge over me, but you know, we made it work for two weeks on this. So I hope that answers your question. It is indeed possible. Does it take practice? Yes, this absolutely takes practice. So if you build a platform like this and you don't have a lot of headroom, before you go on your trip, practice getting in and out when it's empty and then put in your sleeping pads because your pads will add an extra few inches. And it may not seem like a lot until you've climbed in and out a few times. And then believe me, you will notice the extra few inches. It will be painfully obvious. Well, this will be a short video because I just want to answer a couple questions. I hope it helps out. So I don't remember who asked me the first question about any necessary modifications, but to everyone else, yeah, that front middle leg, you will want that sitting on the hump on the floorboard. It just makes everything more convenient. Cut the leg shorter. I was just tired and ornery by the time I got to the end and I didn't want to do anything. So I tried taking a shortcut and that really didn't work. 
but the platform is still working really good. I've made great use out of the Molly panel and shelf. These are awesome. Some people ask me about these. They don't know what they are. Um, I believe it's pronounced Molly, M-O-L-L-E. Uh, that's on the side. The Molly panels are on the side covering the windows. And then you can get like an optional shelf between the panels. Some people don't like these. They claim it takes up too much headroom. And that's totally valid. I can see that. No, for me, I love these. I really, really love these. I get a ton of use out of them. Ah, I think one more thing before I go I want to talk about. When you install one of these Molly panels, you're going to be replacing the little bracket right here that the little cargo net, which is right here, hooks into. So you're going to have this bolt right here. And so the little clip that you had before won't work. Well, what I did was I just got some big old beefy carabiners on each side and actually hooks in like that. See, have it on this side. Yeah, it probably rattles a little bit. Uh, I might get some rubber or something to dampen it a little bit when I'm driving off road because I will hear it rattling a little bit. But if you like this, which I do, this actually comes in pretty handy, but you got Molly panels, this for me has been a solution. All right, and now I'm done with the video. As always, thanks for tuning in and I'll see you again next time.